And now chapter 22, Krishna steals the garments of the unmarried gopis. Shukdeva Goswami said, During the first month of the winter season, the young unmarried girls of Gokul observed the vow of worshipping the goddess Katyayani. For the entire month they ate only unspiced kitchri. My dear king, after they had bathed in the water of the Yamuna, just as the sun was rising, the gopis made an earthen deity of goddess Durga on the river bank. Then they worshipped her with such aromatic substances as sandalwood pulp, along with other items both opulent and simple, including lamps, fruits, betel nuts, newly grown leaves, and fragrant garlands and incense. Each of the young unmarried girls performed her worship while chanting the following mantra. O Goddess Katyayani, O Great Potency of the Lord, O Possessor of Great Mystic Power, and mighty controller of all, please make the son of Nanda Maharaj my husband. I offer my obeisances unto you. Thus, for an entire month, the girls carried out their vow and properly worshipped the goddess Bhadra Kali, fully absorbing their minds in Krishna and meditating upon the following thought, May the son of King Nanda become my husband. Each day they rose at dawn, Calling out to one another by name, they all held hands and loudly sang the glories of Krishna while going to the Kalindi to take their bath. One day they came to the river bank and, putting aside their clothing, as they had done before, happily played in the water while singing the glories of Krishna. Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead and Master of all Masters of Mystic Yoga, was aware of what the gopis were doing, and thus he went there surrounded by his young companions to award the gopis the perfection of their endeavor. Taking the girls' garments, he quickly climbed to the top of a kadamba tree. Then, as he laughed loudly, and his companions also laughed, he addressed the girls jokingly. He said, my dear girls, you may each come here as you wish and take back your garments. I'm telling you the truth and I'm not joking with you since I see your fatigue from executing austere vows. I have never before spoken a lie and these boys know it. Therefore, O oh slender-waisted girls, please come forward either one by one or all together and pick out your clothes. Seeing how Krishna was joking with them, the gopis became fully immersed in love for him, and as they glanced at each other, they began to laugh and joke among themselves, even in their embarrassment, but still they did not come out of the water. As Sri Govinda spoke to the gopis in this way, his joking words completely captivated their minds. Submerged up to their necks in the cold water, they began to shiver, thus they addressed him as follows. Dear Krishna, don't be unfair. We know that you are the respectable son of Nanda and that you are honored by everyone in Russia. You are also very dear to us. Please give us back our clothes. We are shivering in the cold water. O oh, Shamasundra, we are your maidservants and must do whatever you say. But give us back our clothing. You know what the religious principles are. 
And if you don't give us our clothes, we will have to tell the king. Please? If you girls are actually my maidservants, and if you will really do what I say, then come here with your innocent smiles and let each girl pick out her clothes. If you don't do what I say, I won't give them back to you. And even if the king becomes angry, what can he do? Then, shivering from the painful cold, all the young girls rose up out of the water, covering their pubic area with their hands. When the Supreme Lord saw how the gopis were struck with embarrassment, he was satisfied by their pure loving affection. Putting their clothes on his shoulder, the Lord smiled and spoke to them with affection. You girls bathe naked while executing your vow, and that is certainly an offense against the demigods. To counteract your sin, you should offer obeisances while placing your joined palms above your heads, and you should take back your lower garments. Thus the young girls of Vrindavan, considering what Lord Achuta had told them, accepted that they had suffered a fall down from their vow by bathing naked in the river. But they still desired to successfully complete their vow, and since Lord Krishna is himself the ultimate result of all pious activities, they offered their obeisances to him to cleanse away all their sins. Seeing them bow down like that, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the son of Devaki, gave them back their garments, feeling compassionate toward them and satisfied by their act. Although the gopis had been thoroughly cheated, deprived of their modesty, ridiculed, and made to act just like toy dolls, and although their clothing had been stolen, they did not feel at all inimical toward Sri Krishna. Rather, they were simply joyful to have this opportunity to associate with their beloved. The gopis were addicted to associating with their beloved Krishna, and thus they became captivated by him. Thus, even after putting their clothes on, they did not move. They simply remained where they were, shyly glancing at him. The Supreme Lord understood the determination of the gopis in executing their strict vow. The Lord also knew that the girls desired to touch his lotus feet, and thus Lord Damodar, Krishna, spoke to them as follows. Girls, I understand your real motive in this austerity has been to worship me. That intent of yours is approved of by me, and indeed it must come to pass. The desire of those who fix their minds on me does not lead to material desire for sense gratification, just as barley corns burned by the sun and then cooked can no longer grow into new sprouts. Go now, girls, and return to Russia. Your desire is fulfilled, for in my company you will enjoy the coming nights. After all, this was the purpose of your vow to worship Goddess Katyayani, O pure-hearted ones. Thus instructed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the young girls, their desire now fulfilled, could bring themselves only with great difficulty to return to the village of Raja, meditating all the while upon his lotus feet. Some time later, Lord Krishna, the son of Devaki, surrounded by his cowherd friends and accompanied by his elder brother, Balaram, went a good distance away from Vrindavan, herding the cows. When the sun's heat became intense, Lord Krishna saw that the trees were acting as umbrellas by shading him, and thus he spoke as follows to his boyfriends. O Stoka Krishna and Amshu, O Sridama, Subal and Arjun, O Rishabha, O Jasvi, Devaprastha and Varutapa, just see these greatly fortunate trees whose lives are completely dedicated to the benefit of others. Even while tolerating the wind, rain, heat, and snow, they protect us from these elements. Just see how these trees are maintaining every living entity. 
their birth is successful. Their behavior is just like that of great personalities, for anyone who asks anything from a tree never goes away disappointed. These trees fulfill one's desires with their leaves, flowers, and fruits, their shade, roots, bark, and wood, and also with their fragrance, sap, ashes, pulp, and shoots. It is the duty of every living being to perform welfare activities for the benefit of others with his life, wealth, intelligence, and words. Thus moving among the trees, whose branches were bent low by their abundance of twigs, fruits, flowers, and leaves, Lord Krishna came to the Amuna River. The cowherd boys let the cows drink the clear, cool, and wholesome water of the Amuna. O King Pariksit, the cowherd boys themselves also drank that sweet water to their full satisfaction. Then, O King, the cowherd boys began herding the animals in a leisurely way within a small forest along the Amuna. But soon they became afflicted by hunger and, approaching Krishna and Balaram, spoke as follows. Thus ends the 22nd chapter of the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Krishna Steals the Garments of the Unmarried Gopis.